could never put together patterns and colors and mix them up and make them look so well. Well, in tonight's video, I'm going to teach you some tips, some tricks, and a hack or two so you too can become a dope, magnificent decorator. Welcome to the third masterclass in the 2021 roommate in the 2021 Room Makeover Challenge. I'm your girl Denise Joy, designer and creator of the Puraha Method. Through my process, I use a creative, holistic approach so that each client creates a joyful custom on a budget space with physical beauty, functionality, and it enhances their overall wellness. And by the way, Puraha means joyful in Swahili. So in this video tonight, I am tearing the roof off of this hack that, I mean, it is sweeping, dare I say, it's sweeping the country. It is, it is everywhere. What is it? What's the hack? It's the Fabric Shower Curtain as Art Hack. It's kind of a long name, but pretty much that's what it is. Um, I'm also going to be teaching you tonight how to use different fabrics and frame them or put them on a wood frame, a canvas, a covered wood frame, and to really create a whole new vibe in your space. I'm gonna be doing a couple of videos and I'm gonna give you some tips of what to do and what not to do so, you know, you don't have to waste money and waste time because you know, that's the custom on a budget way. So with a little bit of housekeeping, drop your stay in the comment section in the chat so that I can shout you out, see where you're coming from, where you're joining me from, whether you're watching me live or you are watching uh, the replay. Drop your, drop your state in there. I'd love to say hello and just find out where you're coming from. I'd love to see where my followers and subscribers are joining me from. Also, like this video. Just give it a quick thumbs up. Like the video. It's just great for the album algorithm. Also, share. Share this video. Send it out to your social media, Twitter, Facebook, and say something like, um, join me for dope design tips with Denise Joy. It doesn't have to be that long. You could just share the video too. That would, be, that would be perfectly fine too. So listen, the 2021 Room Makeover Challenge is a challenge that I put together to help my followers work on either a whole room over 10 days. Actually, this is the last masterclass and then the 10 day process starts. Or you could just work on a small project. Maybe you got a junk drawer and you're like, you know what? I need to <laughs> clean that up. Like I had to do that a couple of weeks ago. Or maybe you need to organize a drawer. I had to do that a couple of weeks ago. I actually did a, a storage solutions video uh, on my channel. So if you're looking for storage solutions, check that video out. It's a short, I think it's about five minute video. And, but you could do a whole room. I had one of my followers email me and she said, ah, I'm going to tackle my dining room, the entire dining room. That's brave. That's brave. But you know what? You deserve it. You deserve to have a bomb space that is a destination that you either don't want to leave or you cannot wait to get back to. You deserve that. So, all right. So I'm giving away, there's some giveaways tonight. So what you have to do here is you're going to leave a comment in the, in the chat section, chat section, or leave a comment on this after it becomes a replay. And you have to respond to a question that I ask in this, in this video, just respond any way you'd like, hopefully respond to the question and your name will be entered in just a, a raffle a giveaway a drawing so that you might get one of these. This is the shower curtain hack that I did earlier this week. This is a 36 by 24 wood frame. I actually picked this frame up from the thrift store, from a local thrift store near me. It was $7.99. And I got this shower curtain from Amazon for 20 bucks. So we're at, you know, let's just say with some tax thrown in, we'll just round it up to 30 bucks. And I um, priced this kind of art. This is gorgeous. First, let's just bask in it for a minute because it is gorgeous. But I priced this uh, similar size fabric art or canvas art is what they really call it. And it, this would be anywhere from 125, 165 bucks. So this is going to be given away. The lucky person will only just pay for the shipping. Um, but so leave a comment, respond to something. If I ask the question, like I asked the question at the beginning of this video, maybe you respond to that. I'm also going to give this away. 
This one I'm going to finish off here live with you, finish the corners off. And um, this is so funky. I just love it. I think this will be so cool in like a she shed or, or a teenager's room. And if you have enough fabric, you could do two or three of these and, you know, put them together. Oh, total dynamic. It'd be so powerful. And um, even in a glam space, you know, with the right kind of color tones, if you had a neutral black and white, ooh, child, this would be fire. But these two items will be given away in a bit. I have had a love affair with fabric ever since I was a young kid. When I was in the third grade, I did a quilt as a school assignment. And I gathered all these older clothes and cut them. And just I just have had this affair with, with fabric for such a long time. And when I got my first apartment, I didn't have a lot of money, you know, broke. And I thought, fabric. And so fabric became the first way that I used or created art on a budget. I was doing custom on a budget way back when, y'all. And I'm still heavily influenced by fabric. I actually paint. I'm a visual artist. In fact, um, this is actually a large painting on this wall. You can only see the lower two panels of it, but this is some of my artwork. Uh, I paint acrylic on my cloth, and I just I just adore the textures of fabric. And this is one of my most favorite books. It's Living with Pattern by Rebecca Atwood, Color, Texture, and Print at Home. She goes deep with it, y'all. I mean, deep, deep, deep. I just, even the front cover, I just love that, that pattern on there. And, you know, even in here, and she has the marbling. I mean, it's just a luscious, luscious book. Even if you're not into patterns like I am, but you just want to just to have some good eye candy. It's a nice coffee table book, actually. And I don't get a commission or anything. I don't have a link to share. Uh, but I just really enjoy this book, particularly because I'm so fascinated with pattern. I love how deep she goes into it. I was trying to, oh, here it is. This is one of my favorites. Just that pattern there. This is actually in a bathroom. It's gorgeous. This is sort of, it could be, this could be in many different rooms. Art Deco, this could go in Hollywood Regency. You could even do this in transitional. So I'm talking now about design styles. And honestly, using fabric as art or even using the fabric shower curtain hack as art can go in any design style. This could go fabulously in somebody's glam, right? You could put this in even a Hollywood Regis. I mean, you could just go up and down the ladder. I wouldn't put this in farmhouse, not unless you were trying to go for contrast, but a contemporary, a true contemporary home, this baby right here, it would just sing. I posted this in a design group that I'm in on uh, Facebook and folk went, it's women. Women went wild. I mean, um, it, it was just like, in fact, there were women who already knew about it saying, I'm doing that this weekend, or how do you do that? And, you know, part that's part of what prompted me to want to include this easy peasy. When I say easy peasy, anybody can follow these steps and do it. But before we get to that hack, I want to... I want to walk through a couple of different items that I have up here. Then I'm going to do a demo. Then I'm going to go to a couple more items. So hang with me, y'all. And remember, to have a chance to win this piece or this piece, you want to leave a comment in the chat and respond to a question. Any question, almost respond to anything that I say. Leave a comment in the chat because... These babies right here are fire, straight fire, okay? All right, so let's look at some examples. Um, this is such a nice piece right here. This is a beautiful piece of mud cloth. It's actually indigo mud cloth. I hope that you can see from the light, the reflection. And it has this gorgeous, thick, weighty frame around it. You could... Uh, the great thing about decorating with fabric is the fabric doesn't have to match. Really, you want to treat fabric as if it's like fine art, okay? You want it to pop in the room because it brings a personality and an energy and a vibrance. And so you could put this in a darker tone, what we call, or what I call classic bo boho or bohemian, where it's really about color. 
boho, contemporary boho, what I call contemporary boho, which is more like Scandinavian, uh, uses much more lighter tone or neutral tone pal palette. But you could put this in a couple of different spaces. Now, I also want to talk about a couple of things you should not do. All right. Don't make these mistakes. OK, I wrote them down so I wouldn't mess them up. Uh, this is a rule. This rule can always be broken, but don't hang your piece too high or too low. The typical rule is hanging at eye level. But what's the problem with eye level? Well, you know, we're all different heights. And so you want to gauge it that if I had hung those paintings all the way up close to the ceiling, well, and I'm craning my neck, you, you know, I think we could all agree that that's just too high. So just be um, clear about what's going to be too high in your space. Um, don't use a frame that's too flimsy. This is a perfect example. This is a thick frame, weighty. This this fabric, this indigo mud cloth, it's it's quite heavy. I mean, it has a little weight to it. And if I had hung, if I had used one of those, um, you know, like a frame you can get from maybe Dollar Tree or something like that, or even five dollar five dollar and below, it might not hold the weight, the backing, and the clips. So you want to use the kind of frame that's going to support whatever the weight is. If this was a thinner material, something really thin, like this thin cotton fabric, which I'm going to use later, then we could probably get away with one of those types of um, one of those kinds of frames. Here, oh, here I'm going to do this example here. This is an example of this could go in a farmhouse country, French provincial, something like that. This is a duo. These would be awesome hung this way. You could hang them this way. I love, I also love hanging things in sets. As you can see my artwork, and there are two other panels on the top. That that artwork, which is acrylic on mud cloth. What is this artwork? So I can ask y'all the question. So you can type something in the chat or the comments. What is this art painted on? Acrylic on mud cloth. Um, it's four foot by five foot. So I love doing duos or triptychs or quartets. I love to pair them in that way. So this was a uh, sunflower runner. And I just got the bright idea. I was actually staging this in a, a home that this type of aesthetic uh, or design style would be a good fit for. And I had these two, got these two frames from Ikea. But let me say again, this has that plastic, you know, Fairly nice size plastic, but this would not hold something heavier. Well, let me let me be clear. The bigger the frames get from IKEA, they they don't hold the fabric as well because this is a fairly small frame. This is doing a good job. Another example is this mud cloth that I just love. This is there's a pair of these. These actually hang in my home. This is in actual glass. And these I had framed professionally, but I just wanted to show you, and I actually hang it lengthwise. Um, they because the anyway, it looks really, really awesome together. And then see how beautiful and bright that is. And it just it just dresses it up. It just makes it look all classy. All right. Now I'm gonna do one more, then I'm gonna jump into a demo. This is uh, some Kuba cloth, and I love the ge geometric shapes on Kuba cloth. I have three different, I have a set of these, and then I have a single piece of long piece of Kuba cloth that's framed in a 24 by 36. Uh, you have the option when you're framing fabric to take the fabric all the way to the edge or sort of center it and leave just a little of the white background showing and it really makes the fabric then pop out and stand out from the frame and sort of makes it have that um, art curation, like art gallery curation, like you would see if it was at an art gallery. So that's just a tip, a way that you can actually hang your art and just make it look like it's high end. What, what do we say? That's the custom on the budget way. So those are some examples. I'm going to share this one here in a minute and these others over here. But let me get into a demo. So one of the number one questions I get is, do I have to have a staple gun to do these types of, of hacks? And the answer is no. If you have a thin enough fabric, I wouldn't do a regular household stapler with some mud cloth because it's just going to be too weighty. But I have this sample. I'm just doing a quick demo here for you all. This is just a fun 
fabric. Isn't that just lummy, lummy? I'm trying to say luscious and yummy at the same time. Isn't this just yummy and luscious? Again, this is something that could go in like a teen girl's room or a, a, a diva den. It's just so nice. And it's this black and white really pops. But anyway, this is thin enough. This is actually the frame for this centerpiece, the, meaning the backing. So this is something that would be framed and hung with no glass and no plastic. It's okay to not have a covering on, um, on your fabric art. Now, if you're in a room where there's going to be a lot of dust or grease or, you know, smoking, dare I say, then you want to be mindful to cover it. So this is just a household. Well, actually, this is not a household stapler. This used to be the stapler that belonged to my predecessor in my uh, office at Howard University. And she was my professor, Professor Vera J. Katz. She left this stapler and um, she was retiring and I inherited it. And it might look rough and stuff with some Afro puffs, but <laughs> I still use it. It works fine. And every time I hold it, I just wonder her and all the others who stapled this. So when you start out, you're going to cut your fabric a couple of inches bigger than your, and this is just a sample, so I'm not going to do it straight to the edge, but you want to center your backing, lay the fabric inside. I already stapled this side, and then you want to tuck and pull, as, tuck and pull, and you want to start in the middle. And you want to staple close to the edge because you don't want the staples to be seen once you put the fabric in the frame. And so I'm not going to do every single part on here because I want to get to a couple of um, a couple of different a couple of different uh, demos. But I will show you a corner. So here on this corner, the fabric is laid out this way. You're really kind of folded like if you were wrapping a gift. Okay. So then we're going to take this part and we're going to fold it and tuck. And then we're going to fold this to make that nice corner, nice corner, right here, here, put it on a little um, triangular shape and fold it forward. Make sure it's flat and taut. Boom. Regular household stapler. Boom. Okay. So I'm going to go around on this side. And I'm not going to finish all of these, but I will tuck it in the frame so you can see because I'm going to move on to our next demo. Again, doing the corner is straight. Make that triangular piece, crease it, fold it, boom. Let me show it to you. It makes that piece, household stapler, boom. And look at that tight corner. That's just a household stapler doing that. Now I'm just going to pop this in this frame so you can get a sense of what this might look once it was finished. Of course, you would cut the excess off around the edges so it's not flopping like that, but I'm not going to complete this one. I just wanted to show you how gorgeous this would look hanging in your teenager's room, your diva den. You might even put this in your boss home office. This is a high-end, gorgeous-looking piece here. And I didn't really center this just for this example, but you could get really great. You could really center this and really make it pop. I have a small one that I did where I was centering it just so you could see. And this one happens to be uh, covered in glass. So this has a glass and, and this isn't finished. I just tucked it in here because I wanted to show you an example of how fabulous this looks when this is centered. Now, let me tell you where I got this, this fabric from and where I got several fabrics from. The good old thrift store. Don't sleep on the thrift store. Some people say, oh, I can't. Listen, there's some quality pieces in those places. And hey, type it, drop in the chat. Do you, do you? Do you hunt for custom on a budget finds at the thrift store? Remember, when you respond to a question that I say during this, this uh, masterclass, your name is going to be entered to win one of these. Actually, I'm going to throw this one in. Earlier, I just mentioned two, but now I'm going to give, I'm going to give away three pieces. So three people are going to have a chance to win one of these custom on a budget pieces that I'm sharing with you tonight. But the thrift store and um Great way to get, I got this fabric, gorgeous fabric here. Um, what did I pay? I think this was $3.99. $3.99. You could even make some gorgeous pillows 
out of this. Remember, patterns, shapes. And, uh, and if you want to learn some more about some of the design composition principles, which are really what make any room look so well put together, you want to check out the previous, the second master class where I did the demos on making your pillows pop like a pro. I really walked through the design composition principles. So I am not going to go back through those tonight, but you, you can see those. So let me share, share this again. I'm going to give this away. Anybody who drops a comment in the chat or comment on the replay of this video. Now let's go ahead and do, we're gonna do this one live. This one is on a wooden canvas frame. This actually has the canvas in there. The canvas was blank. And where did I get this from? It was a shower curtain and I got it from the thrift store. Again, this fabric here, I think was like $3.99. I kind of have a price point I don't go over. All right, so I already stapled this all the way around. For this one, I am using a more professional staple gun to secure this. But let me show you this corner. And also, wear safety goggles. I don't have any on right now, but when I'm using this, I usually keep a safety goggle on because you just never know. So y'all, I'm not Catholic, but say a prayer for me, you know, that nothing happens here. So I finished the edges and I didn't trim anything yet because I'm not finished, but I got pretty close to the edge here. So this here, we're going to fold this one this way. And then again, do that same fold as if we were wrapping a present and then pull that baby top because we want that, we want that corner to be crisp. And then Take your staple gun and boom. And there you've got it. You got that tight, crisp corner. It looks so professional. It looked like you, you know, you paid some good money to have that done like that. Let's do one more. And then I'm going to talk about this one, this setup. All right, we got our corner here. We're going to lay our piece out. This one is a little bit thicker than I'd like, so I'm going to trim this a bit. And, and it'll all be cleaned up and polished by the time it's going to the winner who receives it. Pull it tight. Turn that corner like you're wrapping a present. Pull it forward. Staple gun. Staple gun. Bam! Look at that edge. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Later on, I'll trim everything off and you won't even know that there was any excess there. Fan, fan, fantastic. All right, I'm gonna do one more demo in just a moment, but now let me show you, and I'm gonna give you some more tips, but let me show you this lovely gem. This is the shower curtain hack with a cotton, bohemian medallion pattern on it. And I did take, uh, go to the extent here to center one of, the one of the medallions in the center of the piece and to get sort of the edge so that it really has a centered effect. This would be super, super fly in a bohemian bedroom, a teen bedroom, or if you just had a, uh, a family room, an office, it's, it's sort of, Zen, right? It's kind of serene when you look at it. Let me pull a little closer so you all can see. I'm trying to stay in the light, right? Stay in my light. That's what we learn in the in the entertainment industry. I, did y'all know that I used to be on uh, HBO's The Wire? I am a former actress, so go back and look at uh, season one and see. I had a reoccurring role, so I know a little bit about stay in the light. Where's my light? <laughs> so this again is the shower curtain hack. This is a finished product. Let me just show you the back. See those corners and how neat that is. Everything's trimmed off. Wooden frame. Got this frame from where? The thrift store. Paid a six ninety nine for this frame. Two ninety nine for this shower curtain. And I had enough fabric left, made a pillow to match the artwork, made this pillow. The pillow insert cost me uh, $2.99, and I was able to put this together for really pennies. It's the custom on the budget way, pennies on the dollar. So I am going to give away this piece 
this piece and our marble-esque hot shower curtain hack to um, in, a, in a raffle style to uh, folks who drop their name in the hat. Leave a chat, a comment in the chat and leave a comment on this video if you're watching the replay and I will make that selection a little bit later in the week. Isn't this fly? Do you think this is super fly? <laughs> leave a comment in the chat and let me know. All right, we are almost at the end here. I am going to show you another, another tip. I keep mentioning the thrift store. I keep mentioning. Um, and I mentioned that this frame and this frame, they both they both came from the thrift store. Pennies, pennies on the dollar, because you know, I'm all about the custom on a budget way. Now, these are some small pieces. These are cute little sort of appropriate for uh, a baby's room or a young child's room. And I've had these three pieces. I've, I've not designed or staged because I like to buy things and put them in a space. And so I buy them, I clean them off. These I cleaned off with some, uh, with just some bleach on a rag, on a rag. Well, it was a rag. So anyway, what I want to do though is show you how you could take this off. I wouldn't recommend it. I would just put my fabric right on top of this because this already acts as a base and that way your fabric isn't inclined to get caught on the corners of the wood and tear and stuff like that so i just tack this on here to show you what i'm talking about but here's the tip if you are working with a thin fabric like this white uh in this um in this particular shower curtain you don't want it to have anything on the back this particular canvas was already white from the thrift store and pristine so that's just a, a caution if you want to go that route but i'm telling you the, there are so many pieces that you can find you can even get frames gorgeous good quality frames from the thrift store clean them up give them new new life keep them out of the out of the um the bin right the trash bin or the hop as they say in Britain. Now, so I'm just gonna walk you through and we'll, I, maybe I'll do this whole one. So I did this side already. When you're ready to do the other side, staple down from the center out to the edges, but don't go right to the corners because you're gonna need those later to do your corners. Turn the piece, hold the brace of the frame, fold it over and tuck it and kind of hold it in the middle, good and tight. Not too tight because you don't wanna overstretch it. And bam. Now, again, this is more of an industrial. I wouldn't use my household. And again, don't laugh at my don't laugh at my hand me down statement from my former professor at Howard University. Love this baby. It takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. I wouldn't use this because the wood is dense and the thinness of the staples in a regular stapler might not hold. But if that's all you have, give it a try. So I put my center staple in and then I'm going to sort of gradually move out and keep pulling that fabric fairly tight. Okay, move it a little bit. Make sure that this fabric is doing what I want it to do. So I'm kind of pulling it and holding the frame. Being mindful, don't, don't stay for your finger now. And I said earlier, when I'm using this kind of stapler, I try to, not try, I usually wear my safety glasses but because I'm doing this, I'm going to go for it. And I just ask y'all to keep sending up good energy for me that I'm not going to get anything happen. So then we shift and we turn this piece. And again, we go from the middle. And you keep pulling that fabric. I think we're going to do pretty good with time here. So y'all putting y'all comments. Y'all excited about a chance to win one of those three pieces? Respond to something that I, a question that I asked during this. So now we're on our fourth corner, but let's look at how we're shaping up here. So we've got this beautiful tautness here. That's when you get that professional look. Now, of course, our corners aren't done yet, but let me turn this corner. This is the final side, start in the middle, pull it tight, and bam. Pull it tight, and just sort of work your way down. I'm just doing this to show you how quickly you can actually make these pieces. Now, this is a smaller piece, but well, I kind of cut my cut my fabric a little here. But at any rate, 
you can pull this piece right here took me about 20 minutes this large this is the largest 20 minutes because i had to work to center this one this took me about 20 minutes as well this one i want to say took me maybe 10 minutes all right and this is looking like this is taking me most of it because i'm talking to y'all is taking me probably five minutes so we get to our corner i like to go this way here turn my corner in complete that tuck that baby over boom same thing here Turn that corner, tuck it, and boom. And again, see how tight and crisp those corners turn out, looking all professional. And if you make a mistake and you want it to be even tighter, that's the beauty of this. Get you some appropriate uh, staple remover, remove that staple, and do it again. No foul, no loss. Tuck that corner, boom, boom. Let's finish this baby off. Y'all, I need a clapper. Somebody clap for me. I feel like I did the limit one uh one of Guinness Book of World Records. <laughs> and bam, there you have it. This one's a little crooked because I was moving fast and I wasn't really watching, but you'd want to pay attention. So this is a good way to, to example this. You do want to center. Once you're centered, um, if I was really paying close attention, I would have stapled this side gotten this side tight and then flipped it over just to make sure nothing has shifted and then gently moved it over and sort of gate lined it up and kept stapling. But just to show you how quickly you can do this, get the fabric, cut the fabric, get your frames. Again, I highly recommend. In fact, I have three of these. You could cover these in some fun kid fabric or even something to go in your home office and make a nice triptych out of these and it will just look marvelous. Fabric is also so meaningful because we have a close relationship with fabric as just as human beings, right? Our clothing, we get dressed in a certain way because we want to communicate a certain vibe, right? We want to make sure that people know who we are through what we wear. Well, I say treat your fabric the same way in your home. Use it as art. Let it be a reflection of your personality. Um, I have a couple of more tips here. Um, create a gallery wall. I love a gallery wall. In fact, I have a gallery wall in my hallway where like going into my bathroom and into the bedrooms, it's a little unusual spot to have it, but it's like such a cool surprise. You know, people are like, oh, wow, like, oh my goodness, all this art is in here. And some of it is fabric and some of it is charcoal drawings that I did and some of it is art that I purchased. But you could do a, a, a gallery wall. Let's say we took a piece like this and a piece like this and there's a tonal relationship here we might group these in some way along even with some colorful pieces so the point is you don't have to stick to sort of one thing you can really mix things up so create a gallery wall using uh using fabric and the shower curtain hack you want to be do something like that and again treat the fabric like fine art um, you can also find pillows in patterns that you like. Yes, at the thrift store. There I go back to it. It's thrifty fly DIY, y'all. And um, you love that fabric, but you're not going to use a pillow from the thrift store, right? I well, I wouldn't either. But you can take that fabric and make sure that's something that you can clean easily and clean it and cut that out and then use that that fabric in frame as framed art. It will just change the vibe in your space. And I hope you learned something like super, super doable that you're like, okay, I can do that. Because people often say to me, Denise, how do you do this? Listen, follow the steps. Just take the things in order. Take it in order, step by step. You can do it. Make sure you leave a comment so you have a chance to win this piece or this piece or a lovely white and I guess this is sort of a light turquoise boho piece. Leave a comment. Thanks so much for joining me on the third masterclass of the 2021 Room Makeover Challenge. And if you want to be a part of the Room, Maker Cha Room Makeover Challenge, just click the link at the top of my page. It'll take you right to a page. You can put your name and your email. 
and you'll be in on the goodness because we're going to do a but sort of a finale and a reveal in 10 days of the projects or the rooms, just the stuff that people have accomplished. Thanks again.